Good morning. This is Ian King live in our business and economic news from the heart of the city. A moonshot that could get us back to normality. How is Boris Johnson on his hopes for mass testing that could allow us to go about our daily business despite the crisis? But the overall tone was downbeat and chilling for business, with increased restrictions likely for months. Well, two British companies think they have a new game-changing testing system. It takes just 20 seconds, and Heathrow Airport has already bought the machines, manufactured by TT Electronics, with the screening technology provided by Iabra. I took the test and spoke to the TT and Iabra CEOs a little earlier. You want to take the swab out? Okay. Rub it around the back of your tongue, inside your cheeks, as if you were... Right. Uh, Wiping it around to get it nice and saliva done. Okay. If you break the stick, there's a break point on it naturally. If you just kind of bend it and pull it. If you put it in the castellated part of the nut, the other way around, so right. that you've got the, the, the dry end in. Okay. Push it down. All right, how's that? That sounds good. Take it to the capsule. You push it in. Okay. All the way down. And you twist it three times. Just to make the sure the swab goes onto the lens. Okay. Then you pull it back until it goes past that castellated nut, and you're done. You want to place it in there. And okay, again, moment of truth. Make sure it's the right way around for right. the shape. Just drop it. Just drop it. Press the button. It's right now. <laughs> it's, it's removing uh, the knot from. Uh, microscope slide from the uh, cartridge itself. Um, that's being placed under a holographic microscope, uh, which allows us to image uh, the sample at uh, a nanometer scale. Um, and it, the AI engine that's in the front of uh, the system here uh, will onboard the device, uh, analyze that as a, uh, a biochemist normally would, um, count up the number of virus particles on the slide, and uh, work out if you're positive or not. Ah, and it says here, no virus detected. Excellent. Excellent. Happy okay. days. <laughs> Good news. Oh, there we go. Good stuff. It's as simple as that. It's an uh, automated microscope. And how foolproof is this? Well, as beauty of being physics rather than chemistry. As, as we all know from the Olympic Games every four years, they're very good at mixing tests up. Uh, chemicals become impure. Um, they have uh, other problems in the lab. Uh, whereas here we have physics done in front of you. It's hard and fast. Um, in either the virus either is there or it is not and we count exactly how many of them but how can you be confident that you are measuring the virus accurately so we are actually uh, bouncing three different uv wavelengths off of each cell in the sample uh, they give off a unique pattern which the ai engine has learned and they're literally down to uh, even very close relatives so the coronavirus has uh, close relatives such as uh, the common cold and we can actually see a very distinct pattern between the two because of the way the light entangles uh, with the molecules on the uh, proteins on the surface of the virus. And so, in theory, this could be used to detect things like the flu as well? Absolutely. Uh, and uh, we've tried it with a number of different viruses uh, as part of our filings, as part of uh, ongoing development work. Ultimately, this could well be the biosecurity tool uh, for us all long term uh, to deal with the common cold, tuberculosis, uh, you name it, all those uh, respiratory infectious diseases. So you built the machine? We basically engaged with IABRA to start the initial units and get them out to launch customers as early as we can, yep. and that is starting in real time. Yep. And. Uh, how many can you produce? What, what are the sort of constraints on production? So the team, uh, my team, TT Electronics in Hartlepool, the design engineers and technicians there have been working with Greg over the last few weeks to get the first units off the line. And now they are focused on getting this pro product to be able to scale it up uh, as we move forward once launch customers confirm their expressions of interest. So where are the first tests going to be rolled out then? Uh, so the number of uh, players in the UK we're working with, uh, we're continuing to work with government in order uh, to understand their needs. Uh, there's a lot of mass gathering type uh, activities. We've done our operational field trial at Heathrow, for example, um, and uh, you know, clearly the airports are a major target, as are other transport users, as are organisations uh, who operate things like stadiums. Boris Johnson says that airport testing isn't reliable because it only picks up 7% of cases. 
What's your response to that? Um, they, they need to look at the innovation that, that's out there fundamentally. Uh, we've got a limit of detection, which is considerably lower than the best PCR tests out there. The further you drive that limit down, the earlier you can pick up those who are asymptomatic, uh, who have just got a new infection. Um, you know, I, I think around a 20-hour mark for uh, detection really realistically gets them to an arrival and departure test uh, that they can uh, they can start moving forward with. And who has, I mean, obviously you've been going for 10 years. Who, who's been funding you all this time? Uh, we've, we've had a number of fantastic partners, uh, included uh, Dell and Intel. Um, who were the first people we, we reached out to. Um, and they said, you know, if, if there's definitely a market for this. Go find someone who can help you build it. And that's where we were introduced uh, to TT. We've done a fantastic job taking an idea uh, that you know, we only came up with 23 weeks ago to apply our existing AI technology um, and turn that into a real product we have here today. So apart from the government and regulators, what are the other potential obstacles to a rapid rollout here? Well, I think this is all about now, as we've been focused on getting the first units off the line and getting them out to launch customers so that they can do their own trials whilst the regulatory process is ongoing. Uh, and that's what we're focused on right now. And you know, I think our view is once people get their hands on these machines and see what they can do in offices, sports stadia, theatre, transit terminals or, and or airports, as we've seen from, from the Heathrow example, then we think the, the demand will turn into real, you know, real rollout orders and volume production. And what about the profitability per unit of this? Is that uh, something that you can disclose? Uh, I think it's difficult to say at this time. Um, however, you know, ultimately, our goal is to make this available en masse. You know, we want this to be something you can utilise going into the office every day um, to be able to you know, afford to do at a sports stadium, transit hub, etc. Uh, ultimately, for us, it's as volume as much as anything because ultimately it's the value add to society uh, as well as uh, the commercial is striking that right balance. Fundamentally, we can make vast quantities of this because there's some plastic and glass in here, not some complex, uh, high-precision chemical manufacturing. Chief Executives of Iabra and TT Electronics talking to me there. What an amazing piece of kit that is. And uh, my producer obviously felt that I was a bit peaky yesterday because he made me do that test twice.